Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to Study Tips from a Professor that wants you to learn faster, better, smarter, and with less effort. You're starting your semester. This is a great time for you to look at ways to become more effective at learning. It's the most opportune time for you. I'm going to be releasing weekly videos. I've already got one video prior to this. I'll leave a description for that video. Uh, in the show notes uh, so that you can go back and watch it. Um, why? Why learn faster, better, smarter, and with less effort? Well, number one, they don't really teach you that much about it in school. We should be doing a lot more of that. Uh, and in grade school and public school and high school and colleges and universities, we do do some of it, uh, but we can do a lot more of it. The other thing is you can take ownership of your own learning. That's actually the best when you're actually doing something like this and taking the time out to try to get better at what you do. That means you have intrinsic motivation to improve yourself. And that really sort of sticks that information when you're um, putting that foot forward. The other reason is, you know what? There's this chart I have, and it's from a book called Thank You for Being Late by Thomas Friedman. And he kind of quotes Astro Teller of Google's Alphabet Group. Uh, on what the view of technology and human adaptability and learning comes into play. Uh, when we look at human adaptability, you know, and the rate of change, how technology is changing, we're kind of at this threshold now where it's actually changing faster than our ability to learn. Uh, and that can cause a lot of problems for a lot of people. Now, what I'm saying here with this is that it's not necessarily going to solve everybody's problem, but if you're among the 20% that learns faster, better, smarter, and with less effort, you're going to be less stressed. You're going to quickly rise to the top of your field of expertise, whatever that might be, and that's going to give you a competitive advantage. So why would you not want to do this? Why would you not want to look at ways that you can improve yourself beyond just what I'm doing in some videos? Really sort of dig deep into this area. It'll pay you back in compound interest over your career. So you want to build up these uh, um, routines and principles and tips and techniques and ways of doing things so that you can improve yourself and learn in that respect. So let's take a look at today's five pointers. And again, every one of these I could spend a lot more time with, and I probably will in other videos. But for now, let's just get you on the right foot. Um, one of the tips that uh, I've learned uh, over the years, and I've also seen it in research, and I've seen it in a lot of different areas. You know, when you're reading material, a lot of times when you're reading, you kind of, your mind kind of wanders, and you forget what you ever had that, where you read something, it's like, what did I just read? What did I just... And you have to go back, and you have to look at it. It's not a bad practice if you're if you're reading something that you want to try to remember you want it to stick better uh, basically read that material and then look away and try to recall the important points from what you just read and if you can sort of look away and just not look at the book and not look back at it and try as best you can to recall those points and even better than write them down physically write them down then it's going to be much more sticky. And when I mean sticky, you're going to retain it better. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to retain important information uh, better uh, and longer so that we can pull it down and use it when we need it. So it's not in one ear and out the other ear. And if you do this frequently, that's going to help to build those neural pathways in your brain to those points that you talked about so that it doesn't just become a fleeting uh, memory. So keep that in mind. When you're reading something, it seems like this is something that I should really try to remember. It's sort of take a second, look away, and see if you can recall what those points are. It may mean that you go back, you reread it, and then you try to look away. You try to write down what those points are, and then it will stick much better from that perspective. Number two, build practices into your day that will support your learning. We all have habits. We get up, you know, Many of us, we get up, we go and we brush our teeth. We don't even think about it. That's a habit. Going to bed, maybe we brush our teeth then. So that's a habit. And if you've done that all the time, you don't even think about it. It's just you're in motion. And that's, that's, that allows you to be able to do things much more effortlessly. Um, you can do things during your day that you build in habits that makes it easier for you to find time to study. 
So if you have a time block and you've got that blocked off and every day at that time you do that, that's a habit. Maybe you're, maybe you're stressed with time, you work part-time, you've got all these things on the go. Well, if you make it a habit that from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock every night you shut off the TV and you study, then that's a habit. Then when 9 o'clock comes, you're not even thinking about it. It's not hard for you. Oh, I got to... You're just into that routine and it just becomes so effortless that way. I remember uh, three years ago, I took a sabbatical and I was... Uh, trying to get into the habit of studying again because I hadn't done it for a little while. i have done my uh, degrees part-time while I was working, my, my business degree and my MBA. So I have gotten those habits, but it had been a while. And so what I did was I built in routines of when I was going to study and what I was going to study. And so I did the PMP, Project Management Professional Designation, uh, and I got into the... because a lot of material to study and to really understand. And even for me with a project management background, I really had to get down to the nuts and bolts of it, of what they wanted. And I built in this routine. And when I finished that, I was in this great routine. And I thought, you know what? There's this certificate of management and lean construction. I should do that. I'm in this routine. It won't be a big deal. And I just flowed right into it. It was, it was effortless to do that. It was just a nice, even flow. It was in that study routine. You can build these habits that make it much easier for you. Also, if you've got a bad habit, maybe an opportunity to get rid of it. You know, if you've got a habit that every night you come home, you turn on the TV, you surf the internet, and you kind of just meander, uh, if you don't make plans, somebody else is making plans for you. All of the marketers and everybody with their advertisement and everything, they're trying to get, steal your time. So it might be an opportunity that, well, I spend too much time on this, so I'm going to block this to shorten that. So I'm correcting this bad habit and I'm adding a good habit that really is going to accelerate your ability to learn, retain information and to improve yourself overall. And that'll serve you really well in your career. Athletes don't wait around and train all day and night the day before the event, right? So you've got to spread it out. That's what I'm saying with that. You've got to spread it out. You don't want to have uh, that. And I, as a professor, I get this all the time. Oh, sir, I had to study. I had to cram. You know, I've been just cramming for the last three days straight. Cramming might get you through the test. There's some research that, you know, you can get through that test. But the problem is, within a day, you forget everything. Right? It's all gone. And the problem is, the next semester, you build on stuff that you learned in this semester. And so that you're digging yourself a bigger hole in your progression. And even worse... When you get out in the field, you've forgotten everything from school. And so now you're struggling with that. Spread it out. You will retain it a lot better, right? So if you try to study everything at all, say 10 hours straight of studying, it's not going to get you the same result as, say, seven hours of studying one hour every night for the past week, right? 10 hours isn't going to get you as much as seven hours having that spread out. So that's the other thing. Spread it out. Save yourself some time. Greatly reduce your stress level. That's another thing, right? We burn out if we stress ourselves all the time. So if you're finding that, then build some habits that helps you to spread that out and take less time, enjoy the process more, and make it more effortless. Get a good night's sleep, especially before a test. You know what? We're not as sharp if we're really tired. And I know myself, when I was younger, many times I did not get that much sleep and it did have a certain toll on my clarity of thinking. So you want to make sure that you get a good night's sleep, especially before a test. Uh, the night before the test is not the night to, to study till 4 a.m. because you didn't spread it out from the last one. Uh, you want to make sure that you're well rested for key events. You get a little bit of brain fog going on. You're more slow to recall things that normally you would be able to recall. You know, I teach, I'm a professor in construction management and on construction projects, very often we fall behind. And so what do we do? We work overtime to catch up. Well, if you're a tradesperson and you're working overtime, you know what? You're tired. You're not as sharp. You're not as fast. You don't get as much done. You maybe do something that causes an accident. Uh, there's safety issues. Well, the same thing goes with learning. You know, you're not as cognitively sharp when you're tired. So make sure that you get a good night's sleep. 
you can do some background research on what is a good night's sleep and different people have different tolerance levels but definitely make sure for your tolerance level you are getting that good night's sleep number five try the most taxing material first well that kind of ties to the other point you can sort of see how these kind of work together uh, if something is really sort of tough so if math isn't your thing and you're you're doing some math homework maybe that's not the last thing you want to be studying right maybe that's the first thing and if, if writing is the easy part or doing some sort of report analysis or um, scheduling is kind of your thing maybe that's not the first thing you do maybe the first thing you do is the tough thing which is the math it'll lower your anxiety around that topic you're more fresh more clarity in your thinking and you'll be able to solve it more quickly that more complex element and learn more effectively that way so looking at swallowing that frog i think brian tracy used the the term in one of his books on productivity and time management uh, swallow that frog or eat that frog first uh, the, the tough thing first when uh, you're starting your day or when you're starting your study time so those would be five good tips to look at and you know yourself where you're strong and where you're weak so like maybe three of them yeah i'm good on that i'm good on that i'm good on that no i didn't i'm kind of weak on that and try to work on one at a time don't try to throw everything at all at once um, you build up habits and routines it takes quite a while you know there's no statistic everybody's always looking for a statistic how many days how many times well it depends on what it is it depends on your personality it depends on what's going on in your life but what's for sure is when you do really get that habit and routine in it makes it a lot less effortful it becomes effortless for you and you will learn faster better and smarter with that so i'm tom stevenson hoping that uh, some of these tips uh, help you please put in the comments you know what's going on uh, where where are your issues that gives me ideas for uh, future videos on on this topic as I've said I've worked with thousands of students over the years and myself I'm a lifelong learner so again any uh, comments that you have in this area can be helpful for me to actually improve myself as we go along in this journey together uh, also click subscribe if you enjoyed this uh, click the notifications uh, then you'll be updated when I have new uh, videos you can check the various playlists on my YouTube channel all the best and we'll see you next time. Tom Stevenson saying goodbye for now.